All right, this is my MBC solo guide with gameplay as example. At the start of the fight, when you first walk into the room, you will want to stand one tile to the left or right. One tile to the right is just enough distance to avoid the first of many stun shot shotguns. Each of the shots will boomerang back to the boss, and after they do, you will want to push in for DPS. Once you do enough damage, he will rush towards you with a chasing phase. I would suggest dragging him back around the room to avoid the dangerous pure damage attacks. Once you have pushed him again, he will return to the middle with pop rocks, a little more damage, and he will shoot out tentacles. These tentacles are not usually very dangerous, but the paralyzed does not last long enough to get you killed. Pushing him out of this tentacle phase will lead to a circling phase, where the main objective is to avoid the confused shurikens in purple. As you can see, there are black shots. These black shots will be used to mimic a tentacle phase and you will want to stand to the bottom right of the boss to push him. Alright, I'm going to pause here because you see that seven pop rocks are now coming at you along with two shotguns of silencing shots. Just activate what you can and back up. It is much easier to dodge these attacks when you are further from the boss. Once you have dealt with these pop rocks and you're not about to die, this is when you'll want to circle around the arena, dodging what you can and tanking most of the shots to keep up with the key and deal DPS. Do not fret if the key zooms away from you, as surviving is what is most important. You can simply wait for the key to circle around the arena back to you so you can deal more damage. Once you kill the key, the boss will charge at you again. Just keep calm and drag him around the arena doing DPS as he chases you. The yellow shots that you can see can paralyze you, and the purple shurikens are what you need to focus on dodging most. Once you push him, he will head back to the center of the map, and I would suggest that you make sure you heal up to full. He will circle counterclockwise indefinitely, and all you need to do is stay alive and attack him when you can. When you aren't shooting him, you can break the towers to make dodging a bit easier. Make sure that you are full health before you push him into this next phase, because this next phase is the second hardest phase. Alright, I am going to pause here to take a breather. The most important thing to remember when soloing NBC is that you can always take your time and just focus on healing up. Don't worry about killing the boss as fast as possible if you're blinking. This is the two keys phase. Both keys are circling around the room in opposing direction. The reason this phase is so hard is because these, there are these things called drive-bys. Basically, they drive by and they shoot a bunch of shots that can be very daunting. Now, here's a clip of me going in for too much damage on the keys and inevitably dying to my own hubris. Back to the main video here on a paladin, it is a lot easier to stay alive and I would certainly suggest paladin as your main pick when learning to solo NBC. Once you kill both keys, you will be given a bit of a break phase where you can easily take your time and just kill the towers and stay back healing. Once you feel confident to go up for DPS, you can push the boss into a much trickier phase that is the main cause for most failed runs. This very tricky phase is the inner and outer rotating key phase. This is the one that you want to remember most. Do not hit the yellow shots. During this phase, you are given a heavy task of running into the center and having the boss jump to you before running to the outside to do as much damage on the outer key as you can while dodging the yellow paralyzed shots. You must repeat these steps until you kill both keys and you can push the boss to an easier phase.
I'm going to pause the video again as you see that I just got paralyzed. In most cases this means that you have to nexus because escaping is nearly impossible. Here are a few clips of me getting paralyzed and losing the whole run because of it. The paralyze is so dangerous not only because the boss is going to jump to you and instantly kill you, but also you have the confused debuff that lasts longer than the paralyze. Back to the main clip, as you can see I do manage to handle the confusion debuff and dodge the next set of yellow shots to get back into the fight. Now for the next phase, this is basically the break you get to take before the hardest phase. Survival. The best way you can prepare for survival is by getting the boss to a sliver of health just above 10% of his max and cycling tower spawns. To cycle tower spawns you want to kill them, then wait for them to respawn and kill them again as fast as you can. This will allow you to have the maximum dead tower timer that you can have during survival. The reason tower cycling works is because there is an in-game timer that is set to respawn the towers, and killing the towers late does not extend this timer. During survival, the main tip I can give you that will allow you to succeed is to push up off of the wall. The towers will make you want to go around them against the wall to dodge their shots, however in reality, this just makes not getting hit much harder. As you are about to see in this clip, I am sticking way too close to the wall and I am severely being punished for it. Not to mention the fact that my survival started with the three worst colored shots, green, white, and orange. Can't go in for DPS and I'm constantly slowed. <laughs> Get off of the wall, Chad! Come on! You're making me look bad! There we go, it is much easier to dodge in survival when you have all four directions open for you to dodge, but when you are against the wall you only really have three directions to dodge. The wall might be deceptively safe, but I promise you it is much more dangerous. Try to be pushed up and you will see a massive improvement in your ability to stay alive during survival. I won't deny that you can and should use the wall, but you should only use it to dodge shots because being against the wall can force you to take shots that you wouldn't normally be forced to take. I'm going to speed up the survival because in the clip it takes me way too long to finally push it. <laughs> it is kind of funny to watch it in fast motion. You got this Chad! Alright, onto the final phases. Here you get a break to relax before these final phases actually start. You can break the towers and wipe off the sweat from your hands before the boss starts with random phases. I am not going to go over all of the final phases as you should already know them from NBC runs with groups. The most important thing to remember is spaghetti and void spaghetti. Each of them shoot at where you are and you can easily dodge to the side while backing up for each shotgun to avoid them entirely. If you ever get paralyzed during patty jumps, just nexus because you are pretty much guaranteed to lose your character. Most phases you can either choose to run away and heal or go in for damage and I wouldn't say any of them are necessarily worth watching out for. Just stay away from the center of the room because you can get petrified or even paralyzed and have the boss switch phases and jump all the way on top of you and kill you instantly. Most phases you can either choose to run away from or go in for damage and I wouldn't say any of them are necessarily worth watching out for. Finally, 
When you see the boss turn purple and jump to the middle of the room, you know that you have earned that sweet, sweet blue bag. This boss is a scam. Why did I even waste my time for two stupid life pots? That's it. I'm dropping these on the ground.